by this service and just thank the Lord Jesus Christ that we can be here today together. Father God, we come to you the mighty and glorious news, the gospel of Jesus Christ, who has never changed, who's forevermore, who's the same today, yesterday, and forevermore. Father, thank you that we can stand this afternoon and know that your word will not come back void, but it will have its way in the heart. Us. I pray that the Holy Spirit will hover over this place and Father that the Word of God will follow Jesus and shed His blood. We can never change that. That is forevermore. And this afternoon, Lord, let your holy word find its path. Bless this place. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray this. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. May his name be glorified. My dear brother, my dear sister, thank you so much this afternoon that we can be here. It's so, oh, let me put it this way, it's such a privilege to bring the good news. God's word is always good news. And God's word has always promises in it. And God's word is there to encourage us. can find peace in our hearts. Many times we come in situations that we think it's over. Yes, I pray, but I don't see anything change. My dear brother, my dear sister, if the heart does not change, your circumstances will never change. It always starts with you. God will never come. In a harsh way, God will always come and do it in a gentle way. Hallelujah. But this afternoon, our heart. Now, when you open the Bible in Ezekiel chapter 37, we see something here. God is asked, actually asked the prophet a question. He asked a question about a hopeless situation. He asked the question because he wanted to test the heart of the prophet. Many times God will ask us some questions so that he tests our hearts to see what is really in the heart of men and women. Now the Bible says in Ezekiel on me that's Ezekiel. And I was carried away by the Spirit of the Lord to a valley full of old dry bones. So we see something happening here saying that there's a valley with a lot of dry bones. The bones Who is dry? The ground. Wherever you look, 
You just saw the dry bones scatter over the whole place. In our lives, we feel in our hearts. These dry bones, your life be ripped apart, scattered over the whole place. No hope, nothing. So, then say to him, So the Lord answer him or ask him a question. And the question is, looking at this hopeless situation, looking to this, the answer, or he, or he asked the question, the Lord God, Can these bones become people again? It's a question that the Lord God asks. The prophet said, I just see a lot of bones being scattered all over the place. And he asked, You see, in the eyes of people, it will always be impossible. But in the eyes of God, He was He's always got a plan for me and you. God will never leave you, nor forsake you. He will never turn His back on you, based on the fact He's always got a plan for you and me. Always! So he asked this question to a man of God. He asked this question to somebody who has a relationship with the Lord. So we asked Ezekiel, how many times, my dear brother, my dear sister, did you look to situations? How many times? How many times have people asked you and you say it's impossible? Ah, listening, maybe on the air, doesn't matter where you are. Plus situation. How many times have you asked yourself? And you say, nothing has been changed. You see, just like the prophet, God asked him a question. And he said, men of dust, can these dry bones become alive again? You see, my dear brother, my dear sister, the problem is, we think we've all got all the answers. We think we understand it. Until God asks you actually a question, can you create men out of these bones? See, if I give you a few bones here and I ask you, my dear brother, my dear sister, can you see? Nobody can do that. Nobody. You see, this afternoon, wherever you are, wherever you heard this word, God 
people attain your situation, your hopeless situation, into a situation of hope. You see, we want change, but we don't want to change. We want God to help us, but in my conditions. We want answers, but on Ezekiel looking to this hope. With unbelief in his heart. You see, the moment you've got unbelief in your heart, that's where you will always turn to the negative things in life. You will always turn to the things that you think that will give you hope, that you think that can help you, that you think this can change my situation, but it's never going to change your situation based on the fact you are trusting on your own instinct. You are trusting on your own ways. Is he who trusts in his own mind? Cursed is he who trusts in his own knowledge. You see, it's a situation. It's a situation. And the prophet replied, Lord, you will. doesn't matter where so many times you've tried so many times you have cried out of your heart so many times you was on your knees crying out to God but you see that was just to change your own situation in your own ways Lord God, you have the answer to that. You see, my dear brother, my dear sister, until you cannot come to the day where you acknowledge the true loving God whose son died on the cross of Calvary, who has paid the price, whose blood was shed for you and me, you will never, ever find the answer. So, he said, Lord, you know. You know. I want to tell you, God knows your situation this afternoon. You think God doesn't look. You think God does not see. He understands your situation. He knows your footsteps. He knows everything about you. You, he created you. I don't care who you serve. I don't care what to do. The Bible says that God. The Bible says in sun. We are all born in sin. There's nobody except Jesus Christ who was born on the of Romans says we are all born. Sin means not listening to God's voice, but doing my own thing. Sin means there is a, a separation. I do my own thing. I don't listen to what the will of God says. 
That is sin, my dear brother, my dear sister. Sin is not the things that we put tags around and we say, you do this and you do that and you do that. That is not sin. Sin means there's a separation between you and the whole man God. There's a separation between you and this world. There's a separation based on the fact That's a separation to be truth will set you free, not a lie. Will set you free. What truth? You see, there's your truth, and then there's the Bible's truth. Your truth is only something of your own knowledge. The true living Son of God, He is the righteousness for you and me. He is the one who put us in right standing with God again. What is so wonderful is that God does not condemn people. They condemn themselves. God never condemned people. Never. But living in separation, living apart from God's will, that Dear sister, now as he was standing there and he said, Lord, you know the answer. I want to ask you this afternoon, do you have answers on all your problems? If you tell me yes, you have, is my question. Now why doesn't why does your problems not being resolved? Why does your circumstances not be changed? Why, my dear brother, my dear sister, why does it not change? The answer to this problem, maybe you're sitting here this afternoon and you're saying, I don't have the answer. You see, my beloved, many try to in talks. Hi, let me tell you when you receive the Holy. Don't, then you don't have to do anything to get on the high. The Holy Spirit will give you a high. The Holy Spirit will lift you. The Holy Spirit will uphold you. The Holy Spirit will be there for you. But you see, we get so used to our negative situations. We get so used in the way. He says, Lord, you alone know the answer. Now my question is, why don't your circumstances change? Why? Why does it not change, my dear beloved? The problem is never by God. The problem is never to keep your eyes on somebody else. But the word of God says, keep Answer to a hopeless situation. This was a hopeless situation. The dry bones lying all around. Saying, Lord, I do 
alone have the answer. And then the Bible says in verse 4, Then he told me to speak to these bones and say, O oh, dry bones, listen to the word of God. Dry bones, dry situation. Listen to the word of the true living God. You will not stay the same. You will have to change. Things change once I speak the word of God. Not my word, but the word of the Almighty God, whose son who died. this afternoon ready to receive you ready to accept you just come as you are maybe you're telling me pastor you don't know my life my life is a mess my life is upside down Today, yesterday, and forevermore. He never changes, although we change. Look, we change every day. It's just how I feel the morning when I get up. When I get up in the morning, I not feel no, I'm not feeling too good. You know, then I've got this attitude. This type of attitude, hey, just leave me alone. I don't feel so, so nice today. I don't feel so wonderful today. I don't feel... Uh, actually to speak to you today but a wonderful He's waiting for you and me. He's calling to you and me. He's calling you out of a valley of dry bones so that your life can be restored, so that your life can make a difference, so that your life can be alive again, alive that is worth it all. And he said, speak over these dry bones, speak over them. And listen what's the prophet doing. He don't speak his own words. He said, listen here, dry bones. Listen to the word of God. Listen to the word of God. I declare this afternoon over this place, they will hear the word of God. I declare this afternoon in the spirit, I make a declaration. Works in the name of Jesus Christ. I declare an open heaven. I declare the glory of God. I declare the mighty revival. I declare men and women who will turn back to God. I declare it this afternoon in the name of Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. And he said, he says the following. But the Lord, our God says, you see, dear beloved, my beloved brother and sister, you know what? Too many times we listen to people, what people have to say. Too many times we trust in people. Too many times we think they've got the answer. Too many times. Her, it will change. But he says, Do what he says. Listen. And now. See. I'm going to make you live. 
and pray and breathe again. In the eyes of men and women, it's impossible. You see, my dear beloved, this afternoon, if you can just take your parcel that you carry with such a burden upon is pressing me in the crowd. Lord, I can't take it anymore. Lord, my burden is my alcohol. My burden, my burden, I can't take it anymore. My burden, I bring it to you. I cannot change it, Lord God, but I know that you can make the, Im the impossible possible. I know that you can make the impossible possible. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. Jesus, the Lord God himself says, the Lord God himself say, himself, he himself say, I will speak life over these dry bones and they will breathe. They will breathe again. Without oxygen, you are really dead. Without oxygen, so the same stuff can be next to me. You are really dead. Your sister this afternoon, if you just can learn to bring your situation, your hopeless situation, this hopeless situation to somebody that can make that only God that can do this. In the eyes of men, impossible, but in the eyes of God, you can you can make a decision and say, "Then where does it start?" The moment you bring it to God, you say, "Lord God, help me, help me, Lord, help me." Died on the cross of Calvary, he can help you. I promise you, beloved, he can help you. He's the one that changes things. He's the one who's got the whole world in his hand, in the palm. The whole wide world in the palm of his hand. This God loves you so much that uh, so much that he wants to come in your heart and stay there so that he can be the king in your heart so that he can be the king of kings and the lord of lords in your heart not any god but the true living god jehovah jehovah the one whose son died on the cross of calvary who has paid the price Say that these bones will breathe again. I will replace the flesh and the muscle on you and cover you with skin. I will replace I will replace meaning I can Maybe this afternoon you sit here and say, well, well, Preacher, do you understand? Do you understand my situation? I don't have to understand it. You know what? God understands it. He understands it. But that's why 
I bring you the good news. What is the good news? The good news is he changed circumstances. He changed circumstances. That's when you see things different. That's when you say, oh, Lord God, I cannot go without you anymore. I want to accept you as my best. That's when situations start to change. That is when situations start to turn around. Hallelujah. You see, God... He doesn't ask your permission. He doesn't ask the permission of nobody because he's your creator. He doesn't ask the permission of nobody. You think I can change it? God said, let me show you what's impossible for men is possible for God. He is a God. The way you wanted, but the way he wanted. And he replaced. He always gives you something new, something afresh, and the that was something old. I will replace it. You, you see, we're getting so used to the old. We're getting so used. Like God. God in the situation. It must be the old thing, it's far. We accept, we accept all this, this rubbish and we it. When God says, when I do something new, I do it differently. Not the way you think he's going to do it. Where does it start? It starts the moment. When you open your heart, when you accept the word of God in your heart, when you accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, that's where it all starts. My dear brother, my dear sister, this afternoon, look into the situation. It's hopeless. But God sees the hope. God want to bring you this afternoon hope to tell you it's not the end but the beginning. To tell you He is the one that changes it. That He is the one that will make it possible. Hallelujah. Can we give the Lord a hand? He is worthy to be praised. I'm going to close with this. And he says there, I will replace it. The flesh and the muscle of you to cover you with skin. And I will put breath into you. And you shall live and know I am the Lord. You see, it's situations. It's situations. It's situations that makes 